Hey everybody, well I'm back after a week of being away, I'm, I'm finally back at working on the plane and I'm, I'm excited, I can't wait to get back at it. I flew, uh, I flew to Texas on commercial of course because my plane isn't finished yet, that, uh, that builder of mine, he's darn lazy. Um, I'll tell you what, nothing encourages you to build a plane more than flying commercial. Uh, so in the video right now, this is me working on the first step of the elevators. I had to go through and uh, separate out all of the ribs and cut them. And so here I am, they, uh, they come in a bunch of single parts that you have to go through and cut and deburr and get into, the, uh, into shape. It takes a little bit of time, no big deal. Just, uh, you know, mark them with a pen and run each of them, uh, of them under the bandsaw. Once that's done, it's about time to peel off all the bluing and uh, prep them for use. I think this is another piece that really gives a, a very good sense of scale. Uh, once you start putting it all together, you realize, wow, these elevators are huge. Um, I think I got that same sense. You look over there in the background off to the left in front of the motorcycle. I've got the uh, vertical stabilizer and then that's the rudder to the right of it. And I mean, they're almost the same size and this is the same way. So you, you can't quite see the horizontal stabilizer in this shot. It's actually to the left of the table there. But uh, the rudders are, or elevators rather, are easily as big. Uh, here I'm using a bench grinder. I went and got a bench grinder to put one of those uh, bright wheels on and to help me with, you know, deburring. Uh, I got more serious about deburring, like I said. I said, you know, I'm going to get serious about this deburring thing. I want to make sure this plane is my forever plane, lasts forever. And that means that I need to, you know, not fool around when it comes to cleaning and preparing the parts. So uh, that's what I did. I went and got this thing. By the way, you can get these at Home Depot for like 40 bucks. The Scotch-Brite wheel, uh, it's a six inch wheel, uh, is something that I bought from Avery as part of my overall package. And uh, you can check that out. I definitely recommend it. Uh, nice device, nice, you know, easy. Makes deburring and cleaning a heck of a lot easier. So after I put all the ribs together, the uh, next step is to build the inboard outboard tips, um, which is what I'm holding there. And uh, it took me a little bit to figure out what's going on there. Uh, I, I didn't understand how this all was going to go together, so I had to flip through the, the docks a few times just to kind of figure out what are they trying to get me to build. Not overly complicated once you figure out exactly what's going on. Once you find all the parts and get them lined up, the rib assemblies go together nicely. And uh, this is the point at which you realize I'm now gonna have to make two of everything and they're gonna have to mirror one another perfectly. Uh, and there's a lot of that in this section. So this, by the way, is 9-2. Is I'm not sure if I said that earlier. Uh, there's a lot of mirroring because you're doing both a left and right elevator. One thing it does mention in the instructions is that you need to straighten uh, the pieces and what it's talking about is the back of uh, the inboard and outboard piece and you just use your uh, fluting pliers and just kind of give them a little squeeze and straighten that out so it lays flat on the table. Mine actually came mostly flat but once I got them all cleaked up and put together and drilled out they look like this. Isn't that beautiful? It's a good camera. Uh, there are a couple places where those, you know, it looks like there's a little bit of a bend, but it's actually supposed to be that way because, well, I did it to make them straight, which I know is a dichotomy. I bent them to make them straight. Eh, okay. Anyways, so now I'm doing the next thing, which is uh, cutting these shear clips. Thought I'd give you a little close up of my uh, bandsaw action. It was a terrible shot. You can't actually see the blade at all. Uh, but once I got those all positioned up and deburred, I, uh, you know, again, taking the deburring seriously, I placed them out on the uh, thing and took a shot of them. So there they are in all their glory. Do they look glorious? I think they do. And this moves us on to the next page. That was the end of 9-2. Uh, now we're on to 9-3. And of course, the first thing you have to do is kind of clean up your work area a little. So 9-3 is all about... Uh, the skins for this area and I, I decided to go through and start marking and, and figuring out uh, what I'm supposed to do and got the uh, soldering iron out so I could start removing bits as necessary 
uh, you'll notice there's actually four skins we're working here. There's, uh, you know, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And what you have to do in very short order is decide which of those is which. Because as soon as you do what I'm doing here now, which is bending the tabs down, uh, that determines their position on the plane, and forever will that dominate their destiny, right? Um, I would say be careful with the tabs. It's very easy to overbend them. Uh, I used my rivet gun with the power turned way down. Basically, it, it was almost pointless, but I just sat there and slowly worked over it and gave them a little bend. Uh, it came out all right. Uh, you know, I think I probably could have done better had I taken more time. Uh, but, you know, it worked, so I guess I can't complain too terribly much. Once you get those bent, and as you can see here, it's time to move on to the next page. This is 9-4, where I'm, uh, right now it looks like I was working on the reinforcement hint plates right there. Uh, those That was done really quickly, it just didn't take very long. Then I peeled off the vinyl from one of the skins and clecoed those uh, spars in place. Now, uh, after reading, you don't have to leave those uh, reinforcement plates on. And in fact, after I drilled them all out, uh, I removed them. I accidentally skipped a step. Don't skip a step. <laughs> but, and you can see here, now I'm doing it correctly. So I drilled those out on the table and then pulled those off and then started click going to this kit. Uh, read carefully, boys and girls, read carefully. The next thing I'm doing right here is routing the cable hole. So you're final drilling a very small hole all the way up to 5 eighths of an inch. Be very careful. Uh, it's very easy to drill the wrong hole. Um, I didn't, thankfully, but I could see how that mistake could easily be made. Uh, since you're mirroring these actions, I would put them both out on the table with everything, you know, where it's going to be and mark and then read and mark again uh, and read again before you actually start drilling. Uh, the other thing I did is I used a piece of tape on the, uh, ugh, removing that vinyl takes forever, on the... Uh, unibit drill so that uh, I know I, I wouldn't go any deeper than 5 eighths. And checking my time, listening to music, here we go. More reading! Lots more reading. And this is the beginning of 9-5. So here I'm going through and I'm taking all of those ribs that I previously uh, had created and I'm clicking them to the rear spar, and or sorry, the front spar, and then clicking uh, through the skin to the rib itself so that they're all solid. And this is what it looks like. So you can see each of the ribs are in their correct positions. And by the way, uh, inboard and outboard facing is important, so make sure you follow the instructions there as well. Uh, once I've got it done, I go forward and I put the rear spar in place and clico it down, and that's what's going on here. As always, none of this is overly complicated. Just follow the instructions and, you know, pay attention. That's the most important part. Um, also, it took me a little while to find the 905 root rib. I had it hidden underneath some of the other parts, but, you know, as always, I've complained before, having your stuff, you know, all your pieces organized is, you know, probably better in, in the long run, so that's something I would highly recommend. More reading of the instructions there, and eventually I find that I need to go through and match drill all of the holes on the leading and trailing edges there, and the ribs. A uh, lot of match drilling in this product, as you've imagined already, or already found out if you're uh, building it. You do a lot of drilling. In fact, you get really good with a drill. Um, I did find out using, or I did decide that using the long drill bit here was easier because there's a couple spots where the skin's sticking out too far. And if you try to use a short drill bit, you rub up against the skin. And well, that's a little unwieldy. Here we're putting the uh, those shear spars, shear clips rather, in place and uh, drilling through those. Those will come into play here in a bit. Very important pieces, actually. I, I didn't realize until much later how important they actually are. And this is the beginning of 9-6, where I'm working with the trim access and the bottom skin on the elevators. That's that hole right here that you see. Um, this will actually have a cable that runs to the slit in the bottom, and you've got like a, a cover that fits in the obvious place where it would fit there. Um, and so here I'm drilling all those various matched holes, and then once I'm done, I do it on the other side. Again, you do everything twice, at least, if not four times. The next thing I have to do is uh, grab some, uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's, it's a little, little piece of metal effectively that goes uh, against the root rib and the rear spar. Um, I think they call it a gusset, 
I forget. Anyways, it's just a little chunk of aluminum uh, for strength. And then once you get that done, it's time to put the tip assembly on. And once you see that, you're like, ah, now it all has a real shape. And now I see how it all goes together. Yay. Um, <laughs> it's good stuff. Some of the drilling's a little awkward, as you can see there. And again, you gotta do everything twice. So here I am on the other side doing the same work all over again. By the way, I'm wondering if you guys like this uh, camera location or if you want me to try to give you another view or put it somewhere else. I'm not really sure. Yeah, just let me know, leave me feedback. Oh yay, removing vinyl. Seriously, there's gotta be a better way. And this is me putting the top skin on. And here's where you start to realize how important some things are, like which skin is which, and knowing whether you, you know, correctly had the top left and rights. The other thing is, is how they go together around the shear clip. It's important that you, you have the shear clip on the outside, uh, between, you know, you put the skin between the bottom skin and the shear clip, because when you do the match drilling, which I'm not sure if I do in this video or not, when you do the match drilling, you drill through the shear clip into the two skins, and that is how you determine, uh, you know, the reinforcement. Here I've got, I'm cutting off, or I'm positioning around the trailing edge wedge. And anyways, there's more video, but I'll show it next time. There are the two pieces that I've done so far. So, awesome stuff, guys. See you next time.